Hello, my name is Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist. I'm reviewing another call from the line. This time Dennis is calling in to speak to Matt Delahunty and Darante Lamar. Now, he's calling in with the claim that the Bible is sufficient proof uh, of God or Christianity. So let's go and listen to this. I don't tend to have too much of a problem when people claim that for them, the Bible is an authority, they're inspired by it, by the wisdom of it, etc., etc., and that therefore there must be a God. I won't agree with that reasoning, of course, but it's not the kind of thing that I'm going to spend a lot of time arguing about because uh, people are completely within their rights to be inspired by a text and conclude from there that a God exists. For me, that's insufficient evidence. Um, but if somebody's making scientific claims or saying the Bible was accurate about um, the creation or uh, the sequence of events from the Big Bang onwards or anything like that, if they make any scientific claims or any claims about prophecies, that's when I tend to have an issue. So let's see what Dennis has got to say about why the Bible is proof that Christianity is true. Let's go. Because there are contemporary uh, people at that time, and I and I believe uh, they are guided uh, by God with those uh, as they write those uh, passages. Okay, so so this is the first point that the Bible was not necessarily written by God, but it's divinely inspired. He's seen something in the Bible that leads him to this conclusion. Did they claim to be guided by God, Dennis? No, but I think it's understandable in some way. Right? If you, if you how so? How, how do you get to that understanding? If they didn't make that claim, Dennis, how do you get to, how do you get to make a claim that they didn't make? Well, I suppose in the case of the book of Genesis, for example, it's obvious that nobody was around watching the watching uh, God create the universe. So you could argue that whoever wrote that, if you really believe all this, must have been divinely inspired and instructed by God what to write. <clears throat> I'm not sure, but I, I think that's that's what it is for me. I think it's so, so just to be clear. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead. Just David. to be clear, you're not sure how they get to make that claim. You're not sure if God is energy, but you are sure that the Bible proves God. One of these things is not like the other, Dennis. There, 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 there is a break here. And so you have a lot of areas that you're not sure about. So why not just be uh, honest and just be like, well, I'm not sure if the Bible really, uh, proves God or not. I just believe that there's a God. Why not take that stance? Yes. But but we we cannot uh, discount the archaeo archaeological discoveries, right? The Dead Sea. Okay, right. Yeah. So previously, sorry, uh, you go back and listen to the whole call. I've jumped into it maybe twelve minutes in. Previous to that, he has said that, for example, the Bible is right about a lot of things. A lot of it's been confirmed. Pontius Pilate really existed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It builds up the credibility of the book. That if some things are true, then well, maybe everything's true. Matt's already been and talked about the Spider-Man analogy and said, well, where did Spider-Man live? According to the comic, he lived in New York. New York exists. Does that mean that Spider-Man is real? OK, so that's where Dennis is at with his claims. He's still stuck in this. Well, well, we know that Jerusalem exists. Archaeology has proven it, Bethlehem, etc. And that somehow corroborates all the miracles, the resurrection, etc. Scrolls. Um, what archaeology discoveries mentioned. have this? What archaeological discoveries have proved God? That was the question we started with, Dennis. I think we're forgetting the fact that we have found the oldest manuscripts of the Hebrew. Okay, how does that and, prove and God, just, Dennis? So you remember that was the first question I asked you. It was saying so. What you're saying is, if if I prove that there was somebody named Moses, then this means God must exist. Do you realize how that's not a logical conclusion? That there could be there could be a manuscript exists. I can write a manuscript about God and you can find it. That still isn't evidence for the actual God's existence. Yeah, but the problem with Dennis is he's already indoctrinated and stuck in the mindset that there was a Moses who wrote the first five books of the Bible under the instruction of uh, the Lord God. 
um, the confirmation that uh, if you believe that Moses existed, then you must necessarily believe that there is in fact a God. That's where he's coming from. He's he's already coming from a place where he already very deeply believes. And I'm sure that Durante, he was a pastor. He's been in this position and it's a long process. You, you're not going to get Dennis to suddenly admit, actually, you know, you know something, you're right. Just because Moses existed, it doesn't mean to say that God existed. He's not going to make that leap in one call. If he's ever going to get there, it's going to take years. Yeah, I understand. But I think these are the pieces to the puzzle, right? I think yeah, this yeah. Is the... In other words, you're speaking completely rational and reasonable sense. Uh, you know, however, I've got this, um, I've got this magical way of thinking, which trumps all of your reason. Tiny pieces of the puzzle that um, would lead to the proof that there is. Okay, a... what are the pieces of the puzzle? Explain. A divine being and i think so you're also saying we the... haven't got to the proof yet no i, I believe uh, th there is I, I, I am convinced that there is so but i'm just saying it's for the people to the proof like dennis just give us the proof don't tell us what you keep thinking tell us why you're thinking that's what we want to <laughs> know we want to think like you bro we want to believe like you believe so you tell us, you give... I don't think we want to think like Dennis thinks. No, I have to disagree with Durante there, but I think I know what he means. But I don't particularly... Um, I mean, I don't particularly want to believe in the existence of God. It's just that if it could be demonstrated to me, then I would accept that it's true. Give us the evidence. Tell us, no, this is the evidence instead of saying, well, I just think this could be. Or just be honest and say, I don't have the evidence. <laughs> which is what Matt was saying earlier when you mentioned faith. He says, yes, we're familiar that people use this word faith in absence of evidence. And if that's your stance, then fine. But you can't call in and say there's proof and then your yeah. proof is faith. Of course, I understand. But I think for me, everything in this universe, I think it's contingent. It should be, <laughs> okay. it should be dependent on uh, something else. This is really getting weird because and I, I i promise you i'm not trying to be a dick but this is absolutely going to sound dickish you're not making much sense and you're talking about things and stating things that are either factually wrong like when you talk about the dead sea scrolls the dead sea scrolls are fragments and they are copies they are not originals and by the way they do not include Christian writings, they're Jewish writings, the Old Testament stuff. There are fragments from Hebrew scriptures. There are fragments from the Second Temple time. Um, but none of them, even... If yeah, I mean, the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, I admit, when I first heard about the Dead Sea Scrolls a long time ago, um, I read some sort of vague claims about it to the extent that, oh, this further corroborates um, the Bible. This is this is yet more evidence that these religions are true, that uh, Judaism and Christianity are essentially uh, true, and that a God exists. And somehow, um, this include this this increases the textual um, credibility of the whole Bible. At that time, I wasn't really interested in religion and apologetics, counter apologetics. I didn't really look into it any further. But the Dead Sea Scrolls had a sort of magical ring about them. But then later on, when I read about, and as Matt said, they're just fragments, they're copies. Uh, they're interesting, of course, but in no way do they corroborate anything, uh, any of the remarkable claims which are, are contained in the Bible. But for Dennis, he hasn't done that research. They've got a magical ring, and they corroborate it, just like he's now plucking out. He's got like a salad of uh proofs he's been to the first law of thermodynamics he's now going to the contingency argument and uh you know uh, archaeological evidence well pontius pilus existed so did bethlehem and he's putting this is the puzzle he's talking about you put it all together and it adds up to god exists and christianity is true if we had like original signed copies of let's say uh, a fraction of a of the book of isaiah that would not demonstrate that a god exists it would just demonstrate that we had the original signed autographed copy of part of isaiah it wouldn't tell us whether or not the content of isaiah was true right yeah so why if there's a god if you're right and there is a god why does god not equip you and every other believer 
with solid evidence-based arguments. And instead you guys call in and you say, yeah, but what about the Dead Sea Scrolls, which don't prove that there's a God? I, I could not answer that question, honestly. <clears throat> I appreciate that, and that that's cool. I, on that note, Dennis, I got some other calls, callers waiting who probably think they may be able to answer that question. So I appreciate you calling in. Um, I think you've got some more work to do before either myself or Durante are likely to be convinced. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers, Dennis. Thanks. Okay, well, I think um, obviously it's difficult to know um, precisely what in the end motivates people to make that uh call it's quite a big thing to call into the line and speak to matt dillahunty and present your evidence i don't know how much of the show that uh, dennis knows about whether he's been watching it for a long time but some of the evidence that he put forward like you know energy can't be created or de destroyed according to the first law of thermodynamics then he's going to well everything must be contingent um uh and this sort of uh, as I said, sort of salad bar kind of apologetics where he probably could not explain the contingency argument. He probably couldn't say one or two sentences about the first law of thermodynamics. And yet he somehow picked these things up, maybe in the research that he's done on Christian websites. And in addition to that, he's got this idea that because there are some true things in the Bible, uh, somehow it corroborates everything else. And I think that both Matt and Durante um uh, very successfully dismantled all of those arguments i think that maybe uh dennis had an inkling that he needed to do more research and think about this a bit more and hopefully he'll do that and call in another time either with some stronger arguments or just the admission yep um, okay i'm still a christian but i'm deconstructing and yeah i can see that my reasons for belief uh, are not really that good and but i still believe because i've got faith and i'm not really sure if that's enough but my search is ongoing then that's fine okay well thank you very much i thought that was another good constructive call and um, be back next time goodbye <laughs>